My name is Whitney McFarlane. I am the policy advisor for Janelle Sorrow, who you will meet in a second. And again, long story short, really what it's about here is community and how we're going to move forward together. And in the Virgin Islands, we're only about 110,000 people spread across four islands, but we actually have a lot of real world problems that we have to deal with. We all like to have fun, we all like to vacation, but really we need people to get down and help us govern and help make this island a better spot and a better place to live for everyone. And that's exactly what Janelle Sarr is gonna do. This is someone who has grown up here, went to school here, went to college in the States, got all sorts of experience, and then made the conscious decision to move back to try and make her islands a better place. And that's something that I think that we should yeah. really stand behind. Woo! And also, you know, I do want to give a big shout out. We are here at Tap and Still, so thank you to Human and everyone here for allowing us to use this spot. That was really nice of them. We enjoy their burgers and beer, and we're going to just mix in a little bit of politics, just yeah. a sprinkle of it, yeah. But again, guys, I, I, won't, I won't take up much of your time. Really what it's about, again, is community. Now, if we can all decide and get together and really think that we want these islands to be better for everyone, regardless of where you're from, you know, we don't care if you've been here for 200 years or two years or two months. If you care about the Virgin Islands, you're a Virgin Islander in my book and you're a Virgin Islander in Janelle's book. So, without further ado, I ain't gonna take up all your time. So without further ado, Janelle, come. Come talk to these people, let's go. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out tonight to our second Meet the Candidate pop-up event. Um, I'd like to thank Human. He, is he here? What? He left? Okay, we're going to thank Tap and Still for allowing us to use that venue. I want to thank my campaign committee. Raise your hands. Yeah. All right, they're all young. <laughs> they're all young, and they've chosen to take part in the political process. So I want to thank them for the work that they've done and for the work that they'll continue to do. A little, about, a little bit about myself. Yes. Since it's a Meet the Candidate, I am a 2003 graduate of Charlotte Amaya High School. I left, yeah. I left here to, on a full volleyball scholarship to Florida Atlantic University, Division I. And I left here as a nuclear engineering major. And I spent quite some time in a lab and realized that my passion was not finding the unknown. So I took a test in the career center and I figured out that I wanted to do or have a job where I can impact the community in which I live in. So only class left to take was this class called Politics of Arab Nationalism. And Dr. Robert Rabil changed my life and I ended up majoring in political science. I then went on to Gonzaga University in Spokane, Washington, and I received my Master's of Arts in Organizational Leadership and a certificate in sermon leadership. So my master's degree put my BA into perspective. I understood what it meant to be a leader, a transformational leader, what it meant to serve while leading. And that's what's missing from our public service right now, that we're not serving while leading. Politicians are public servants. People are the employers, and we are the employees. All right. Now this is a movement that we've begun, and it's time for the baby boomers, we love them dearly, but to pass the torch. And it's time for this generation to accept the torch and begin to make changes within our community. The Four Movement Campaign aims to raise awareness and to begin a movement where we become stakeholders in our community. So part of that is to, we, we have a lot of issues. We have a $70 million deferment of school maintenance. We have our infrastructures falling apart. We have a lot of issues that require us to diversify the economy, to come up with ways to generate revenue. So our main focus on this campaign is economic diversification. Looking at the seaweed industry, the legalization of marijuana, taxing monetary exports. These are the things that we have to do because we, we, right now we're allocating scarce resources and we're not doing a very good job of the allocation of scarce resources. But we must move a bit away from the tourism industry. That, that, that does work. But it's time for us to look at other sources of revenue. And when we begin to diversify the economy, 
then we can begin to allocate those funds to our schools, to our infrastructure, to create a more programs for our young people, to stimulate our private sector because government should never be the largest employer of our people. When government employs everyone, that means that you are a welfare state. That, that cannot work. So, that's just some of the things that we want to work on and um, focus on. Look at education reform. Um, Title 17, a lot of our issues lie with our code. So we have to look at revising our code. There are many incongruencies in Title 17. So it's time for us to just take back the community. Um, people before us has, have done it. And in every movement, a sacrifice is required. Any movement, look at the movement in South Africa, the anti-apartheid movement in Bosnia and um, Armenia. Look at what happened in Cuba, the Cuban Revolution. In Haiti, down in the Caribbean, we've, we've had good examples of General Bodho and Queen Kazaya, um, Rachel Francis, Valdemar Hill, and it's time now for this movement to begin. This campaign is not about me, but about everyone. So I want to encourage you to continue to partake in the political process, because politics affect you, whether you like it or not. So thank you for coming out tonight, and it's my hope that we be redeemed, restored, and revitalized. Thank you again. Guys, just to, uh, just to finish up here, I just want to say again, thank you everyone for coming out and showing your support. But remember, registering to vote is extremely important. And the final day to register to vote is October 3rd. You can vote in the Virgin Islands, it, sorry, second, I apologize. You can register to vote in the Virgin Islands after living here for 90 days. So again, a lot of us, we like to complain about the problems of the Virgin Islands, but we actually have to participate to change those. All right, so let's make sure we do it. Let's make sure we vote for someone who's young, energized, and actually wants to help out for a change.